and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where hopefully if I've had time this afternoon, I would have recorded a musical intro to this puzzle, which is entirely appropriate for it because it is called Under Pressure and it's by Analytical Ninja. Um, and we'll probably get a copyright ding for whatever I've just done, but it's it's Freddie Mercury, so it's, it's probably worth it. Um, and uh, the, the reason we're doing this puzzle is it's been recommended to us a whole heap of times, despite what I will describe as one of the most confusing rule sets I've ever read in my life. I've just read this rule set now, and it is crazy. Um, but I take some comfort from the fact, let me just show you um, some of the comments from the great and the good of the Sudoku community on this puzzle. Um, a few comments about it being difficult to wrap your heads around the rules, but basically just saying it's a great puzzle, great puzzle, Nevario there, Fistamafel, fun puzzle, That's that suggests, oh, not too hard, Desert Foxes, it's not too hard, that's good to read. Um, yeah, so apparently this is really wonderful, and um, we just got to, we've just got to gloss over the rules, everything will become clear. And I know you love your your new and innovative rule sets anyway, um, so this should be right up your street. Um, now, what else do I need to tell you about today? I'm quite excited today, actually. I am I'm being allowed out of my cage um, this evening to go to a party hosted by a very old school friend of mine, um, at which there may be other old school friends of mine. And if that's true, I will not have seen those people since school, um, which is well, it's probably over five years ago now. So it's a very long time ago since I've I've seen these people. It will be very exciting. Um, although, as is my modus operandi at parties, I will be found, as some of you know, in the corner. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, ho I hope that I, I, I will get to meet some old friends. I shall let you know tomorrow uh, when I may be hung over, I suppose. We shall have to, we, we shall wait and see. Uh, what else have I got to tell you about? I've got some birthdays to do. Also, of course, what's going on on Patreon. We've got the uh, the Sudoku event of the century, which is Fistimafel's Sudoku Hunt ongoing. I know so many of you have been battling with it and battling with success, which is incredibly impressive. And I'm going to read out the names of all successful solvers uh, in the coming days. Um, we've got Jay Dyer's Sudoku Hunt for you on the 1st of January as the January monthly reward, which is going to be absolutely absolutely epic, epic, let me tell you. And uh, I've just got a few more names from December's monthly reward. So I want to say very well done to the following who did the whole thing. Um, Andrew and Matthew Walker, Daniel Schapemeyer, Nick Baker, Eleanor Godwood, Ethan Stiauer, I think, Jana Enderman, Brett Miller, Joe and Jamie O'Connor, uh, Yerel Nimney Avney, Luke Bovard, Martin Arts, Karen and Brendan Toole, Monica Reese, Matteo Intravaya, and and his girlfriend uh, Chiara actually mustn't forget her, uh, Arkosic, uh, Jake Skelton, James Scheibel, David Fernandez, Hugh Davidson, Julia G, Rob Bretfeld and Joshua Rood. All of you submitted the correct entries and therefore you are very, very good solvers. So congratulations, one and all. And finally, some birthdays and then a very special announcement. So birthdays, um, Aaron or Aaron. I'm never sure whether it's Aaron or Aaron. You need to tell me if there's any doubt. Um, you've turned 27 today. And I know this because your girlfriend Kendall wrote to us and I hope that the two of you are able to have a brilliant day. And also, Shampton, you've turned 33 today. And I know this because your girlfriend, Jen, wrote to us. And I believe the two of you found love because of Cracking the Cryptic. So I think what happened is that Shampton was streaming um, himself solving puzzles from the Cracking the Cryptic app. And Jen watched and the two of them got together as a result. So not only is Cracking the Cryptic good for your brain cells, it's good for your love life as well. Um, and finally, Thomas from your wife, Victoria. Uh, Thomas, I'm not so sure how old you are today, but I wish you well and I hope you have a bucket full of chocolate cake. And finally, a very special announcement, which is not, well, it is a birthday of sorts, but it's actually a birth. Yesterday, 
at 9 a.m. Eastern, is it Eastern Standard Time, Benjamin Walter Donovan was born and um, his grandfather wrote to us, his grandfather Stephen, and said that um, the family would really like a shout out on the channel. So shout out to his mum and dad, his big brother Simon, good name that, uh, and grandmother Ellen. What a lovely thing. So I suspect Benjamin won't know yet what Cracking the Cryptic's all about, but by next year, you never know. Probably be setting puzzles for the channel, if anything, uh, if Chan Erturan yesterday is anything to go by. Anyway, let's have a look at Under Pressure by Analytical Ninja. We'll put the cold towel around our heads and read the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits cannot repeat within a cage. All cages are aquariums. Should that be aquaria? I don't know, aquariums. Um, cells within aquariums are either air cells or water cells, with cells outside of cages not being air or water. Okay, so we only have to figure out what's going on in the cages. I think that's that's what that's telling us. Water cells fill the bottom, fill the bottoms of cages and must have digits greater than all the air cells in their cage. Rows in cages must be either all air cells or all water cells, okay, and cages must have at least one row of air cells and one row of water cells. <laughs> and if that wasn't mad enough, additionally, the cages are pressurized. <laughs> the air cells within any cage must have a higher average value than the number of rows above that cage in the grid. E.g., if a cage occupied only rows 7, 8, and 9, uh, oh, we do have one of those, that one, then any air cells in that cage must have an average value greater than 6. Why 6? The, average, the air cells within the cage must have a higher average value than the number of, oh, the number of rows above that cage. Yes, okay, so above this cage, there are indeed six rows. So if those two cells were air, I don't know what color we'll make air, I'll just make it orange for a moment. It's not really a very airy color, but anyway. Um, and okay, so if these were air cells and these were water cells, we would be saying these two cells have an average value greater than six. Good grief. Now I have, I have, thank goodness, got a, a snip of an example puzzle. So let us study this with some degree of, uh, of necessity, perhaps. Okay, so I'm staring at this now. Um, right, what, what should we be noting from this? We should be noting that each cage I can see has some blue cells and some green cells. That does seem to be true. Um, and the blue cells are always lower because they're the water cells than the green cells. And you can see within the cages, actually, if you study them a little bit, you can see that always a complete row within a cage. So if we look at this cage here, you can see all oh, Maverick's flying past. I haven't heard much from Maverick recently, um, despite his new film being out. Um, the You can see here the one and the three are both green, so they're both air, because within that row of the cage, you have to have the same colour. Now, what's this stuff about um, the size of digits? Um, so there was something about water cells having to be greater. Water cells fill the bottoms of cages and must have digits greater than all the air cells in the cage. Yeah, I'm trying to think, see a good example of that. I suppose this left hand cage, look, the water goes almost all the way to the top. And therefore this digit had to be quite a low digit because had it been a high digit, there probably wouldn't have been enough water cells that could have been higher than the green digit to work in the cage. But the thing that really I want to understand is this pressurized point. Um, because this is a variant of the logic puzzle aquarium, isn't it? Which I have seen before. And I think I've even done an aquarium puzzle on the channel. Um, 
but this pressurized point is weird. So the air cells within any cage. So let's just study this cage for a moment, this four, five, six cage. That has an air cell, which is a four. I see. OK. And there are three rows higher than this cage. Whoa, whoa I didn't mean to. There are three rows higher. One, two, three. So this digit had to be at least a four. Now, had it been two, oh, let's try this one. Look at this one. This has got, this has got five, two, one, and three. Oh, I see. But but because the this cage goes all the way up to this junction, there are only two rows above this cage here. This cage is the one I'm looking at. So the average value of these four digits had to be greater than two. So two times four is eight. So these have to add up to at least nine. And there are four digits and digits cannot repeat within a cage. And the triangular number four, four is 10. So that, that condition was actually automatically going to be met. OK, but I understand. I understand now. I hope that you guys too, too, uh, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Um, but now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Oh, goodness. And we're faced with a totally blank grid. Um, right. I know what I'm going to do first. I am going to fill in. We know that the bottom of every cage has to be water. And we know that the top of every cage has to be air because we're told that every cage has to contain some water and some air. So we can go to the top of every cage um, and make sure that we're doing total rows as well within the tops. That must be air that must be air those both must be air that must be air and those must be air now green was the color of air wasn't it fresh air fresh green air and the bottoms of these cages are therefore going to be water so let, oh that's a complete cage done there on that side um let's put water at the bottom that's that's a complete cage done um like that and now let's stare at the puzzle again and see what this has told us so this has told us that well, let's try let's try and understand this cage because that is a very simple looking cage so that digit whatever it is is higher than that digit but this digit has an average value that's greater than the number of rows above the cage which is two so that cell is at least a three okay so that cell is at least a three and therefore that cell is at least a four because we know that whatever this is it's greater in value than all the air cells in its cage so all we get from that is the tiniest i mean mark would pencil mark that i'm not going to but you can see that this digit has six different options and that digit has six different options i suppose yes okay there's a point there that cell can never be a nine because if that was a nine, this would have to be a 10. So that does only have six different options. Uh, it, it looks like it's got seven because we're saying it's at least a three. But were it to take that seventh digit and be a nine, that cell would be unfillable. So that has six options. That has six options. And no, I'm not pencil marking that. Um, so let's, well, let's try this one as well, because at least that is completed. Um, now... I think we've got to start with the, the air pressure, haven't we? So those two cells, right, there are five rows above this cage. So these two cells average more than five. So that means they add up to more than 10 because there are two of them. So they add up to at least 11. But what are, okay, they add up to at least 11, but they couldn't be two nine. Because if they were two nine, again, this digit would have to be a 10 because it would have to beat the higher of both of those numbers. Um, but it could be 3.8, couldn't it? I don't see why that would be impossible. Or it could add up to more than 11. Is there a reason it can't do that? I don't think so. Let me just think about this. So this is a... So how do you keep this down? Yes, okay. This digit, yes, if that digit was a six, that's that breaks the puzzle, I think, because now these two cells can't include a cell as high as six. So the maximum they could be would be five and four, 
5 and 4 are 9, they are not 11. Now, if we make that 7, I think it can work with 5, 6 here. That would get us to 11, which is the, the bare minimum we need these to be. So all we learn, actually, is that that cell is um, fairly high. Uh, right, and then all the other all the other cages in the grid apart from those two are incomplete in the sense that we if we look at this cage it's w pen domino this domino here is either going to be water or it's going to be air but we we don't know which now No, this is not. I think my impression is we do need to go down the grid, don't we? Because what we need to do is to force the air cells to be high. Because at least that will, will put pressure on them, which in turn will put pressure on the blue cells. So I'm guessing we need to look at some combination of those cages. Let's try the lowest cage first. So what do we know about those two digits? Those two digits have to sum to, well, it depends what this digit is, doesn't it? It depends what color this digit is. Let, let's imagine, I don't know what I want to, I don't know which constrains it more, to be honest. I think it might be constrained more if that's green. I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't really work it out. Let's let's all right. Let's make it blue. Let's make it blue for a moment, just because then I'm only thinking about a domino. Now, what we're saying now is there are six cells above this domino. So the average value of this is more than six. So if it was exactly six, these would add up to 12. So these add up to at least 13. Right. Right, okay, that's that's actually broken then. That's really weird and that's quite wonderful actually. That's this is broken. This cannot be blue. So I was wrong. It, the, the, there must be less pressure if I make this green. Right, and the reason there's a problem here is to make these add up to 13 at least. I've got to be doing that with digits that both of these cells can beat in value. So if I keep these down to the minimum I can, which would be a six, seven pair, because if I use anything else, if I use five, eight, for example, then obviously I need these to be nine and 10 because I have to beat the eight twice. So the, 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 the best way of the most efficient thing we could do would be to make this six and seven and allow this to be eight and nine. And that cell's broken then. There would be no option for this little lonely cell in row seven, column seven. So that cell is green. Now, if that cell's green, we've still got a problem here. Because now these cells, oh, we've got to adjust the, right, okay, we've got to adjust our, our mathematics now, because now these three cells have to average more than six. So if they averaged exactly six, they'd be 18. So these have to add up to at least 19. And whatever we put in here, as it's high, the highest digit we put in there, that has to beat it as 19 right that's a nine okay this is gorgeous it's really weird logic but it's very interesting because could we make the sum of 19 without using an eight or a nine well i know that seven six and five only add up to 18 so that's not going to work so there has to be an eight or a nine in that triple and that has to beat the value that eight or nine so it must be nine there must be an eight in here. That makes this have to be a seven because the eight and the nine have gone in the box. Now you can't put seven in here. So this has got to be, it's got to be five, six, eight because we know it must get to 19. It's bit, this is really clever. <laughs> this is really clever. So that means that's five, six, eight. These are a one, two, three, four quadruple. Um, now that being seven, what did that mean for that? Did this have to be, this had to, had to add up to at least 11. 
and now it can't include a number greater than seven. So that's a five, six pair and we are off and running. Um, and the weird thing about this is, even though the rule set is crazy, actually, it's not been too bad. Now I'm tempted to come back to this cell because that cell we knew had to be at least, I want to say at least a four, wasn't it? And it now, oh, it can still be four, but it can't be five, six or nine anymore. So if it's not four, it's seven or eight. So it's come right down in terms of how many options it's got. Now this square though, I think is still very flexible. It has to be at least three but it doesn't see the five and the six. You know, that, that, that one is still unpencil markable, unless you are pencil mark, in which case it's most certainly pencil markable. Um, uh, and, but we're going to leave it as unremarkable. Um, um, instead of that, we're going to look at maybe this one. Um, or maybe that one, that one's, that one's, yeah, I think we're better off starting with cages that are where their top cell is as low down the grid as possible. Because that cell, look, if that was the only green digit. Now, hang on, that can't work. Right, that is not the only green digit. Yeah, this is the way to look next. Because if this was the only green digit in this cage its value would be higher than five because there are five rows above it. So it would be, it can't be six. So its value would be seven, eight or nine. Now, the problem with that, if it's the only one in the cage, those four digits would all be blue and all have to beat the value of seven. Well, there aren't enough Sudoku digits for that to be the case. So that cell must be green. Um, now, now what? So now we've got to beat an average value of five. So these have to add up to more than 10. So these have to add up to at least 11. Um, that can't be five or six. So if... I'm struggling again here to believe that the, if, if this is the extent of the greenliness in this cage, those cells have to be blue. Now the minimum I could make these cells, or sorry, the maximum I could make them to give me huge, as much flexibility to make these cells add up to 11 as I possibly could do, would be to put seven, eight and nine in there. And that would just allow me to fill this with a five, six pair, but that cell would have no value because it can't be five or six. So there's no way to do this. So those cells have to be green as well. Now I've got to make the average value of four cells beat 20 because we're, we're looking for an average value of five or to beat an average value of five. So if there are four cells, and they had a perfect, and they did average five, they would add up to 20. So these add up to 21. That cell, does this have to be eight now? If this was seven, these squares could be a maximum of six, five, four, and three, which only adds up to 18, and 18 is less than 21, so that is eight. So that's eight. These four cells add up to at least 21 so 7654 adds up to 22 right so we've got one degree of freedom here so this is um well how do we do this do we can we miss out can we miss out five so if we had seven six no you can't miss out five right so it's seven six five and then three or four so this this is i am prepared to pencil mark this is Five, six, seven for definite, that's not seven. That's not five or six. It's five, six, seven for definite. And either three or four. And I'm desperately looking at this, trying to see how this is gonna help me. Um, does that digit now have to be 
nine or is that is that I'm just thinking this digit sees five six in in this cage because the five and the six were that we know must be in that cage are down there but let's pencil mark that um, and it can't be seven or eight so this digit cannot be five six seven or eight so it's either nine which is I think what it's going to be or it's as low as four now if it's as low as four the maximum size of yeah it's got to be nine because if it is four the maximum size of any green digit above it is three but the average value of the air in this this cage needs to beat the value of four so if this is four that's not going to be possible so that is nine there we go that that does almost nothing um, but it was quite exciting for a moment um yeah okay and now i can see the maximum value of these is now six and seven which means the maximum value of this is five so that that seems very forced doesn't it because how could th oh i mean there's something weird going on here actually um because this square well, it has to beat a value of four. So it, if, it, if it was on its own, it would be a five, i.e. if there was no green beneath it. But then there are too many cells to beat because there are five cells that would have to be greater than five and there aren't five Sudoku digits greater than five. So this must be green. Now, now there are four digits so i'm just wondering now if 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 all those are blue does it work but then these would have to average more than eight so they'd have to add up to nine that can work actually that can just work if that was a four five pair and this was six seven eight nine and all blue that would work that would give me an eight and a nine here and a six and a seven here so that looks possible um so let's but let's see if we can go further if we go f down again to here now what are we saying now we're saying that these three digits if they averaged four would add up to 12 we know they have to beat the average value of 12 so they have to add, add up to 13 and they couldn't have a digit in them that was higher than a six because we know the the absolute maximum i could put in there would be six seven so if this was five four three it would only add up to 12 and that wouldn't work because 12 is not 13 let me just double check that i don't think that worked so these are four rows above this so if there are three of these, they have to beat an average value of four. So they, if they had an average value of four, they would be adding up to 12. They have to beat that. So the 13 at least using only digits lower than five, it's not going to work. And therefore I'm presuming if I extend it down again, it's even worse, is it? It must be worse. It must be worse because now these, these have value of 17 minimum with again only using low digits and five, four, three, and two is not going to get you anywhere near where you need to be. Right, so there is there is sort of a balancing of the force here. The only way this works is with a domino that can just sum up to nine by being four, five, and therefore not taking any higher digits, allowing all of these to turn blue, allowing all of these to be six, seven, eight, nine, with these not being eight, nine, that being nine by the power of um, Sudoku, nine, nine, that's got to be nine, that's got to be eight, um, this has got to be four, that's got to be five, that's no longer four, um, pause while I just think about things, um, eight in this cage over here now lives in this cell so this is a five six pair which means right that's important we know the five six in this boot shaped region this sort of tetris shape 
are now in those two cells exactly because they had to be a five six in there and we have two five six dominoes looking at the top two cells so what does that tell us that's the seven now there had to be a seven in this cage it was seven five six and one of three and four now this is going to be the one of three and four so that's got to be a seven um and for our next deduction we will pencil mark some fives up here by using our uh, occasional friend sudoku and we will that's not eight anymore look this eight here is putting pressure on it so that's got a maximum value of six now we're almost getting to the point i am prepared to now i'm prepared to pencil mark this digit which has to be higher than two so it's at least three and it's not higher than seven so it's got to be three four it's not as much as seven so it's three four five or six which unfortunately is as good as we can do i think weirdly um in row seven we've got all the high digits identified and that means those digits are ones twos threes and fours um hmm okay i've not greenified this cell oh good grief that's a mistake that is an air cell because it's at the top of its cage so do i think it's going to be this cage we've got to look at next although the only thing that gives me pause there is because this cage is this eye pentomino is so long it gets quite high in the grid which means that if that was a lonely cell a lonely air cell within its aquarium its value only has to be higher than three so it could be a four a five a six or an eight. Oh, although no hang on that cell seems important now Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Th this cell. Oh, that's that right. No, this is it. It's this cell that's important, isn't it? It's really clever. It's really clever. <laughs> this, this cell actually does all the damage. Wow, this is weird. Right, this cell. How could it be blue is my question. Now, the reason I don't think it can be blue is if it is blue, its maximum value is four, which means the maximum value of this cell, which is the air cell, and must be lower than all the uh, blue cells in the, in the aquarium, would be three. But if this is three, because of the air pressure point, it's not high enough. Oh, no. No, that, that's not high enough. It's not high enough. Because any did any other digits I put in green in this aquarium would all be lower than four as well. It doesn't work. That cell's got to be green. And if it's green, all of those are green. Now we might have an averaging issue. Because this, the average here has to be higher than three. So if it was exactly three, it would be 12. So these have to add up to 13. Oh, 13 at least. which actually is very easy. So that's weird. So turning that green has actually taken all the pressure off. Although that digit, ah, okay, that digit's got to be seven, hasn't it? Because if that digit was not seven, it can't be nine, eight, five, or six. It would be four. And again, that, that forces these to all be too low. So that's seven. All of these digits are lower than seven now so ones two threes fours fives and, seven. and that's that's that is crazy pencil marking isn't it that digit's quite low as well actually it sees four five six that digit sees five um and what did we say these had to be 13 was it i've forgotten they three three times four plus one yes 13 okay so six a six and a five that's going to make that very easy to do actually so okay let's come further down then 
What about this box now, where we've got, again, we've got all the high digits identified. So these are, this is good. So those digits are low, and that gives me a one, two, three, four quadruple in row nine, which makes this cell a five by Sudoku. So the other way, yeah, the other way of seeing that is just to think about fives and where they go. So these are low as well. Whoopsie. One, twos, threes, and fours. Um... Do I know what that digit is now? I have not got a Scooby-Doo. It's got to be, ah, uh, if that was lonely, it would be greater than four. So it would be five, but it can't be five. So it would be, it would be six because actually it's C, seven, eight, nine. Wow. So if that's lonely, it, it is six. If it's not lonely and we make that green as well, then what happens? Then the, then because this C789, the maximum they... Oh, that can't be five or six. Oh, good grief. There's a problem, I think. Does this work or not? Oh, hang on. There's, there's something weird about this. this. This feels like it's broken. Because that... I've suddenly realised this digit by Sudoku is under pressure. It can't be nine, eight, seven, four, five, or six. So it is one, two, or three. I don't like the look of this. Right. The, okay. Okay. So let's uncolor this and just contemplate it for a moment. Because how could this be blue? If it's blue, that sells less than one, two, or three, and yet has to have a higher average than four. So it's not blue. It is green. But now those two cells together have to average. Uh, if they averaged exactly the the number they can't average, it would be eight. These have to add up to nine. So that's got to be a six, I think. Because it, it can't be any any higher than six. And it needs to be six in order to allow that to be three. So that is a six, three pair. That's six, that's five. I'm actually quite relieved about that, that there was even a fill there. Because I thought that I'd broken that. Now, three and six, look, come out of these squares. And they had to be quite high. Well... What was the total for these? These had to average more than three. There are four of them, so we need these to add up to at least 13. Right, so there must be a five in them. Because if there was no five, they would be one, two, three, four as a maximum, and that only adds up to 10. That's a triangular number for four. So, the, so we can place the five. Um, do we need, well, we must need a four in there because one, two, and three plus five is only 11. Do we need a three in there? If there was no three, one, two, and four is seven plus five is 12. Yes, that's not high enough. 12 is not equal to 13. So that has to be the three. That has to be the four. Now, now whatever this is, we have hit the total. So we're in good shape. That's a four now by the power of this being a three. These two squares are now, um, wow. Well, a one two pair so those are not one two so these are not three four so these are not one two so these are not three five this is gorgeous good grief um four by sudoku lives in one of those cells fives we know about sixes we know are in one of those three cells um now, I do not want this to dry up now because that means we're going to have to investigate these other cages. And I think um, that the cages, as we get higher up the grid, the cages are going to become more and more useless in terms of the maths. Because let's just think about that. Let's think about this green cell. Well, that has to have a higher value than the number of rows above it, which is zero. So it's obviously just going to be met. Um, that one has to have a higher value than one. So it, the only thing it couldn't be would be one, which is, oh, look, though, actually, I've got, I've just seen I've got one, a one, two pair in this column. So these are six, eight, and nine. That can't be nine because that cell's got to be greater than it. So that's not nine. So uh, what does that mean? I'm not sure. Let's, what about this column as well, actually, because I've, I've got these digits, one, two, one, two, four, and seven up here. 
Now that digit can't be four or seven. Uh, this is, I've broken the puzzle. Sorry, I've broken. I don't know how I've done that. Uh, oh, unless that, can that be two maybe? And then I, okay, well, maybe I haven't broken the puzzle. I'm just very shocked at seeing this lower digit in a water cell. It clearly can't be one, so it has to be two. And that has to be one, therefore. And the only way this will work is if it's permissible for me to make all of those cells water, which for some reason I don't think is allowed. But let me just try and <laughs> resurrect the solve from this point. Um, no, actually, it's OK, isn't it? It's weird. There is no problem with that. Because this is so low, nor, I've been struggling down here because I needed to make the water cells all higher than meaningful digits that were in the in the green cells. But that being so low basically means that waters, any water cells in this cage just have to be greater than one. OK, sorry. Um, so this is fine. In fa and in fact, that digit is not under any pressure at all. The only, in fact, it can't be two. Uh, Oh, that's a one by Sudoku. So we can do some more Sudoku. These squares are an eight, nine pair, I think. Those squares have got to be three, five, and no, two. I missed off the two as I was doing my scanning. That will not help me. That's not two by Sudoku. Um, ah, beautiful. Right, that digit's the next one we're going to focus on. Because how could this cell be blue? If it's blue, it's axiomatically lower than that one. And that breaks the rules of the puzzle. So both of those are green. Um, that can't be nine, therefore, because that could never be higher than it. So that's got to be a six, eight pair, which means that's a nine because you can't repeat digits in the cage. That's an eight by our old friend Sudoku. <laughs> um, the averaging point here is not in point, is it? Because we, we said this before, there's only one row higher than this cage. So this has to have an average value of, um, well, greater than one, <laughs> which it will do. Um, OK. So I'm not sure what the well, let's look at row six, perhaps, where we haven't put two, eight and nine into the grid. In fact, look, yeah, that's a naked single. C's eight, nine in the column. So that is two. This is an eight, nine pair. Um, there's a two in one of those cells, which is probably not here. Oh, it's beautiful, actually. That's lovely. It can't be there because if that was two, both of those cells would have to be lower and there is only one digit lower than two. So that's two. That means this is two, this is one. It's so weird. It, it felt like such a mad rule set that I was convinced it was gonna be an impossible puzzle to solve, but actually, it's not too bad. I have I've probably done half of it now. Um, now this that's probably the wrong point at which to congratulate myself on having done anything. I might be about to get stuck. One, three, seven and nine into these squares. Let's pencil mark those and see what, what we can eliminate. We can eliminate nine from here, seven from here. That can never be a one because uh, these two cells would have to be lower than it. So that's three, seven or nine. Now, I mean, I want, oh, it can't be three, actually. If it was three, these would have to be a one, two pair. And there's a one and a two looking at that cell. So it isn't three. So this is seven. Or, oh, it's not nine. There's an eight, nine pair. Sorry. So that's seven, which means seven comes out of these cells which creates a one, three, nine triple, which means these squares are four, seven, and eight. That's not seven. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, look, look, look. Yeah, this is good. Right. How can you put one in a blue cell? You can't because you can't put lower than that in, in the green. So this cell becomes a naked single three. That becomes a nine. That becomes a one. 
that's not able to be three anymore and that's lovely because this is at least four this must be higher so that becomes seven this becomes a four eight pair um i don't know what that's quite doing but let's check what these digits are now they're one six and three let's get rid of the corner pencil mark that cell can't be the one again can't put one in any water oh so look that's gorgeous as well look the w pentomino now if we make this water it would have the one in it so that must have greenliness in it and okay so these digits are now lower than seven for sure so they're from one two three four five and six i know you want me to pencil mark that i sort of almost want to pencil mark it myself they can't be one because there's definitely a one in this domino oh all right i'm gonna do it so that these squares are two three four five and six as a maximum that cell can't be four or five And that cell can't be two or five. Okay, so we have we have reduced these to sort of sensible levels of pencil marking. And are these under any pressure from the averaging rule? So we've got two rows above. So these have to average, so they have to add up to at least nine. Oh, they're, they're always gonna add up to at least nine because there are four of them. Triangle number four is for four is 10 again. Okay, well, let's try let's try oh no all right no this is the simple one <laughs> i suddenly thought i'd broken this but i haven't although i nearly have there's a three in blue so the only way that can work is if these are a one two pair and these are blue and these being a one two pair we can do the order so that's two that's one this in the corner is a four five or six which looks fine doesn't it and if this is a one, one and two pair doesn't, oh no, it does. It comes down here and does some things. Although not many things, to be honest. Um, so these being so low puts no pressure on these. And I presume these have a high enough average. Uh, their average is one and, <laughs> they, they do, but only just. They add up to three and they needed, so their average value is one and a half. And that's, they needed to beat an average value of one. So they did do it, but only by the skin of their teeth. Um, right, so this cell now can't be three. Because if that was three, that cell would have to be a one or a two. So that becomes six. And that's important, look, because now that becomes a one, three pair. And if that's a one, three pair, we can take three out of both of those squares. Which does diddly squat i think oh seven here i can do some more sudoku of course <laughs> why should i be surprised about that oh no that six is also doing stuff to that that's four therefore right so that's four that's seven and sudoku is being my friend once i actually focus on it four is doing more things down here four and three so in this column, look, we've not put sevens, eights, and nines, so we should certainly pencil mark that. In this column, we need ones, threes, twos, and sixes. Oh, so look, by Sudoku, where does the one go in column five? These ones prevent it going in those two cells, so it can only go here. So that's one, that's three. There's got to be a three up here now. Um, and in fact, I'm going to pencil mark these digits because they are twos, threes, and sixes. And that's not two. And that has all the options still available to it. So we're still not quite done. Although I think we're not too far away. Can that be three? Look, maybe. I was just wondering whether that could be four. Um right i'm not sure i'm not sure where to look now uh that digit still still has to be lower than six and it's got to be not one or two so that is three and it can, ah there you go it's not four 
So that gives me a three, five pair here and makes this the six. Right, so six, two, three can go into the grid. That six is doing my six and my eight here, which is giving me a nine, which I think I could have got before, but I only just focused on it. So that cell now is not eight, which means in this row, these two squares are a seven, nine pair, and there's a seven looking at them. So it's a nine, seven, eight go in, eight and nine go in down here. These squares have got to be one and five, and we know the order, which makes this a two. And we, that six is useful, look, that's a five. Um, that's good, five, six, four in the corner, no song though, five and six. Three here, so that's five, that's three. Um, is that doing some stuff for us? Yeah, three and four can go in. Eight goes here, four goes here. Uh, that one's under no pressure. Okay, what are those two digits? Oh, they're just resolved. They're eight and nine, I think, by Sudoku. And therefore, that cell needs to be um, blue, because obviously, if it was green, it would be higher than six and eight. Okay, and then we've just got to fill those in, which are six and seven, I think. And we are, oops, six, seven. Have we shaded everything in? I want to say yes. Have we obeyed the rules? I tried to, I definitely tried to. Let's click tick, yay. Uh, it says that we've done it. I hope, it, I hope it's accurate. Um, I have no real way of telling. I'm just staring at it now. I mean, certainly I have no way of telling whether, whether I've obeyed the averages rule, um, but I did try to. And it's a fascinating puzzle. Uh, it's very rare to do a puzzle where I so often think I've broken it. Um, and yet there, there, were, there were always escape valves. That, that being a two up there felt like I'd definitely broken it. But in fact, those three digits being blue was completely natural once this was one. Um, it's just very clever, very interesting idea from Analytical Ninja. And I, it's totally deserving of its enormous, enormous, well, A, its enormous approval rating, and B, the comments from the great and the good, because it was fun. It was fun. And actually, weirdly, despite the rules, it wasn't that difficult. It was just, it flowed very naturally. Clever setting indeed. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the musical uh, connotations of it too. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.